What's going on guys? So in front of me, you are looking at the all new 2021 Chevy Silverado 2500 four wheel drive LTZ package with the Carhartt edition trim. This is a really, really cool truck and it's a really special truck because they've done a lot of things to really commemorate the partnership between General Motors and Carhartt. So I can definitely say this is a beautiful truck. They've done some very, very subtle things to it that stand out in a bold way. And I know that that's kind of a contradictory statement. However, it's pretty accurate. You have this beautiful black truck trimmed out with very, very subtle, yet very bold yellow Carhartt trim. Very nice. The logo, the Z71 badging, everything on the truck is blacked out, except for the Silverado and the Carhartt emblem and then the pinstripe running down it absolutely gorgeous. You can see the front grille has the nice chrome inserts which actually make this truck stand out quite a bit. If you watch the video I did on the 2020 3500 dually in the base trim package, you'll notice a pretty clear distinction between the headlights on this truck and the headlights that you got on that truck. This truck is fully lit up with LED lighting which is their more enhanced lighting package. This truck also has LED fog lights on the front of it as well. This truck also has the 20 inch aluminum wheels wrapped in premium Goodyear Wrangler tires. These are the Trail Runner AT series. And this truck already comes specced out with tubular running boards running down the side as well. As well as of course the bed corner step that you get on all General Motors trucks. Coming around back you can see the LTZ badging, color match black bumpers, as well as the trailer tow package and you can see the massive exhaust pipe protruding out from the bottom of the truck as well as the back Silverado logo, which is also chrome, and the yellow Carhartt logo. This truck was also specced in with the optional bed cover. Very low profile bed cover, it looks really nice. This truck also has the electronic lowering tailgate, which is different from a slow opening tailgate. It is slow, but I press the button twice, you'll hear a series of beeps, and then the tailgate will lower. You can either raise it manually or you can lift it up to a halfway point and it will raise on its own. So if I lift it up to about here, let me try that again, the tailgate will lift up. Very cool. And I believe you can actually do it utilizing the button as well. So we'll check that out next. Yep, there you go. Very cool. Now, I know a lot of people will look at this and they'll say, you know, slow closing tailgates is enough. You don't really need anything more than that. And in some cases, some people don't even need that. But the fact is, when you look at some of the new technology that's specced in these trucks, it's really designed to be more of just a differentiation between the different manufacturers and their high level trims. You know, when you have pretty much done everything you can do to a truck in terms of technology, adding something like this is really just the next step in the evolution of truck technology. And that's why you're starting to see a lot of this stuff. I think even the truck manufacturers realize that some of this stuff is borderline gimmicky and it's not going to help a lot of people. I know there will be some people who utilize this. You're going to grab something really heavy, takes both hands, you're going to carry it in the house, it's raining outside, the last thing you want to do is go back out to your truck just to lift the tailgate when you can do it from the remote or you can do it from a button. It just makes the process a little simpler and for some people they'll really enjoy that, especially folks who just don't have the strength that they might have had in the past. It doesn't mean that they're weaklings, it doesn't mean that there's anything negative about them. You know, the fact is there's a lot of disabled veterans, there's a lot of folks who should still be able to drive a fully loaded luxury vehicle and have convenience features that might make their life a little easier. So I can appreciate that. Coming in close here, you can see that it has five leaf springs, four main with one overload on the bottom, and there are no top overload springs, which is kind of interesting. A lot of people like the fact that GM has moved to putting the DEF fill nozzle next to the diesel fill nozzle. So it's all under one cap. You don't have to go to the front of the truck. And that's something they've been doing for a little while on these newer trucks. I am a big fan of the tow mirrors as well. The tow mirrors on these trucks are actually really nice. In my opinion, it's very similar to what you would get on a Ford truck, and I like those mirrors as well. I also like the Ram mirrors when they're in the upright position. Ram still kind of holds the edge when it comes to technology because they give you the ability to control the bottom spot mirror, the towing mirror from inside, whereas with Ford and General Motors, you still have to get out to move the bottom mirror. I think that that is something that they should all just kind of incorporate in an electronically controlled bottom spot mirror or towing mirror. 
Let's take a look real quick at the towing stickers on this truck. I love the fact that they put it all right here in front of you. Very easy to read and decipher. This truck has a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,350 pounds. So there used to be a time when a three-quarter ton truck had an 8,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. Then it went up to 10,000 pounds. Then it went up to 10,500 pounds and 11,000 pounds. Now 11,350 pounds, which means they're increasing the GVWR to allow for higher payload capacities given the fact that there's only so light you can make these trucks. There's only so much weight you can shave out of the truck to lower its curb weight so you can increase its payload capacity without going over the GVWR. So by increasing the GVWR, it gives you significantly higher payload capacity. Let me give you an example. So the cargo capacity on this truck is 3,085 pounds. If this was a 10,000 pound GVWR, that means this number would be 1,350 pounds less than what it is. It'd be roughly, you know, 1,700 pounds. So when you're looking at what increasing the GVWR does for you, it gives you the ability to have much, much greater payload capacity. But in turn, they also need to make the springs more capable to be able to support the chance that you might put that much weight on the truck or in the truck. Now, when we look at the rest of these numbers, again, 11,350 pound GVWR, it has a GCWR, which is your combined weight rating of 27,500 pounds. This is essentially your truck and trailer completely loaded up together, total weight. Then you have your rear gross axle weight rating, which is 6,600 pounds. The curb weight or empty weight of this specific truck as configured is 8,264 pounds. And the maximum payload capacity on this truck is 3,086 pounds. Now, from a trailering perspective, the conventional trailer weight, which would be like a bumper pole style trailer, up to 18,500 pounds. The maximum tongue weight of this truck, 1,850 pounds. So 10% of your conventional trailer weight. The gooseneck trailer weight, 18,500 pounds. Maximum tongue weight though, 2,775 pounds, which means that even if you could find a trailer that gives you this type of weight, you have to be careful how much weight you transfer to the back of the truck because you need to factor everything in when it comes to the weight. What this is basically taking into account is the weight of whatever the pin of the trailer is, plus just enough weight to haul a couple of adults maybe inside of the cab of the truck. You still need to account for fuel and all those other things. But it's nice that they put these numbers here because typically you have to kind of do the math yourself and you have to figure out what these numbers are on your own. So kudos to General Motors for putting this both on their Chevrolet trucks and the GMC trucks. Now I'm not going to go over too much of the interior of this truck only because there's not a heck of a lot that's different between it and any other high trim truck from General Motors. This interior is very much in line with what you might normally see in an LTZ, even a Denali level pickup truck from GMC. Very, very nice leather trimmed out, a lot of storage, wonderful center console area. You have a wireless charger here. This truck does not have any upfitter switches on it, but you still have heated, cooled, or heated and ventilated seats. You also have all your normal controls there, downhill assist, traction control, parking sensors, lane departure, and your exhaust brake, trailer brake controller right here, and your gain controller. You have a 12 volt port right here, the old fashioned cigarette style plug. Plus you have a 120 or 110 jack right here as well, and a USB-C connection right there. You have little pockets on the side of the center console, which are really nice. And you have a good size center console. I have a bag in there right now, but it's relatively good size, easily large enough to hold like some file folder holders. And you can see they've put little slots in here for that or for a center tray. Now, the key differentiation between this interior versus a standard truck is the fact that you get these beautiful embroidered Carhartt seat logos on the actual headrests. Looks very nice. Now, as we move into the back seat area, one thing that's really nice about this truck is just the sheer amount of leg space that you get. It's not really even worth measuring anymore considering the fact that they're all generally plenty enough room for grown adults. You can absolutely fit large adults in the back of this vehicle. I love how the back area is relatively flat. It's pretty much completely flat except for a real small area right there. Of course, air conditioning vents. This is something that's actually new for 2020 with the Silverado truck. So having rear air conditioning vents that are placed kind of high is really nice. 12 volt jack, USB and a USB-C connection, plus heated seats back here. You have some pockets here. Of course, the storage that everybody loves in these trucks, and if you haven't seen it, it's pretty amazing, is this storage right here. The ability for you to flip out the center part of the back seat and have storage right here so you can store things that you might need in this little area. 
and it's very well concealed. So if you put this little flap down right here, you can actually close it up and you really can't even tell that these seats pop out. They don't lock, but they don't really need to. From here, nice wide and flat armrest. I really like that they made this flat, they widened it out, and the cup holders don't protrude up anymore. It's a flat surface, so if you put your arm on it, it's not going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes I wonder if the folks at General Motors actually watch my videos, because almost everything that I used to comment negatively about, they fixed with this newest generation of truck, which is really nice. Also, a big one are the headrests. Before, the headrests were really small. They were kind of like this headrest right here. Now they've put actual adult-sized headrests in here, so you have the ability to, you know, lean your head back comfortably and not have to worry about hitting your head on the glass or having this part stick right in your neck. A feature that this truck does not have, which I am glad that it doesn't have, is something I talk about in a lot of my videos. It does not have a sunroof. Now, sunroof is optional, but I prefer a truck without a sunroof. I know probably 3% of the viewers of my channel who watch my truck content comment that they would like to see a sunroof, but I think the other 97% of my viewers prefer not having a sunroof. It's just one less thing to fail, right? You have a power tailgate in the back and you know, you're probably gonna worry about that enough. Why do you need a sunroof? And real quick, let's take a look at the price tag on this truck. So this truck, again, 2021 Chevy Silverado Carhartt Edition. They call it Mosaic Black Metallic. The interior is jet black. Has the 10-speed Allison transmission. This truck has a total vehicle price of $75,575. Now the Carhartt Special Edition package is a $3,040 package. It actually includes quite a few things, even though some of the things are a little bit more subtle. In terms of Carhartt badging, you get just a few of those. You get the yellow badging that goes down the side. You get the black grill, the color matched bumpers. You know, there's other packages that offer similar type setups as this specific one. This one just kind of takes everything and puts it all together. You can see the Duramax diesel engine option is a $9,890 option. The LTZ Plus package is a $2,645 option. The LTZ Convenience package is a $1,670 option. Then the technology package, which includes the rear camera mirror, heads-up display, driver information station, $1,475. The Gooseneck fifth wheel prep package is $1,090. All in all, this truck has a base price of $53,700. As configured, $75,575. Now we're at the back of the truck again because I wanted to point out a couple things. First of all, one thing that General Motors has done, and you've probably seen this in all of their commercials, is they've given you the widest interior space of any of the truck manufacturers. This is a short bed truck or a regular bed truck, and you still get the option to put the fifth wheel gooseneck prep package in, which is also really nice. Just be careful what type of trailer you might get that you still have the room to maneuver and turn if you put the actual hitch and trailer here in the back. You have your typical tie down points and you have LED lighting plus you have your seven way connector there if you're going to be hauling a fifth wheel or a gooseneck and above it you have the ability to connect a camera so you can connect a camera system in the cab to a camera system you might have on a trailer if you purchase that system. This truck also comes equipped with 360 degrees worth of camera, so you can view everything around the truck, including in front of the truck. Because it is a Z71 package, those camera views can really come in handy if you're going to be in some type of a scenario where you really need to see where the edge of your tire is when you're checking your approach, departure angle, or you're going to be next to something. So that's really nice. You can see the newest generation of their clearance lights up top where they've added kind of a hump for the three center lights. They look a lot more bold and aggressive than their previous model, and I think they look really good. They stand out really well. Now we're taking a look under the hood at the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax engine. This engine still produces 445 horsepower and 910 pound-feet of torque at 1600 RPMs, and it has the 432 rear axle ratio. And because someone's gonna ask, it still utilizes a fully independent front suspension with torsion bars. So I've had a chance to drive this truck around now for about 100 miles, not too much. However, I can honestly tell you it's a fun truck to drive. I've always been impressed with the ride handling and the characteristics of these trucks. I believe they ride really smooth. Now, this is a three quarter ton truck, so don't expect it to ride like a half ton truck. But at the same time, though, don't expect it to ride like a three quarter ton truck did just five to ten years ago. They've done a great job tuning the suspension and making the ride characteristics of this truck far superior to that of any previous generation version of a three quarter ton truck truck. 
all the manufacturers are doing an outstanding job at that. And I think that that's just a really good thing for a buyer because the last thing you want is to get a super high spec truck like this just to find out that it rides lousy. And I think that this truck tackles the ride handling characteristics really well. But we're gonna talk about that more in the next video when we talk about how it drives and performs on the road. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please hang tight. Now's a great time to subscribe to my channel. You can follow along while we take this 2021 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD Carhartt Edition out on the road. We'll talk to you again very soon.